welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to, first and foremost, Austin Whitsitt, a new Patreon. So I actually chatted with him on uh, Saturday on Ballbusters. So big shout out to you, Austin. Subscribe today. If you're not already subscribed to Austin Whitsitt's channel, Whitsitt gets it. So thank you very much indeed for joining me as a Patreon. Also, John Kays, D.L. Hill, Julian Jeremiah, Maxi Tyken, Michael Kahn, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuker, Bose Nail, Sampson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Lost Cat FE, Open Minded, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neeland, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Nibai, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Bible X, the Flat Earth Channel.com, Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their conversation while I set up for today's live show. No, it's it's coming everywhere. We fight when it happens. When it, when they yeah. break the Constitution, which they already have, then we take mm -hmm. our rights under the Constitution and we fight, or we lose America. Yeah. I mean, they're going to either legally get us at the end when they have total control, and if we say no, get arrested, or they get us now when we fight them. Either way, they're going to get us. That's socialism. Yep. Yeah, but I'm speaking specifically oh. for this where they're trying to make it where you can't eat or do anything. That's when I look into a place out of, let's say, a blue state and somewhere where I could grow, have a little area, you know, and do a little homesteading. Well, if growing food get, was the answer, uh, quick, I, 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 I would love it. I, and I can grow food, so you know where I'm coming from. I think this is... Oh, I know. It's not, that's just the beginning. Yes. I understand that. But that's going to be the thing. That's going to be the way. immediate thing that if you're living in a, in a city or close to a city, then... Yeah. It doesn't matter what state you're in. You just got to get out of the city. Right. You got to get out of yeah, the city. Yeah, but even if you're in the city... Like somewhere like where... You, just just like, one second. Just one second. Still, you're already, guys you're guys in, in G+. Plus. Hello? Yeah. A couple of things. Have you got a yeah. fan on? Uh, number one. I'm upstate New oh. York. I'm... No, I'm not going to get this. Yeah, I people guess there, the people there aren't thinking like the city. Can you hear me? No, this isn't me either. Can you hear me? Mm. I can hear you. There's really high static coming. I don't know. 50 50. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can like hear you. Can't I don't think you. they can't hear you. Very strange, the whole thing. Well, okay. I have discernment and be alert. That's all I can yep. say. Can't. That's about it. B plus, can you hear me? Time of our life. So, um, listening to some of the uncut and after shows, it's pretty interesting. Which ones? I haven't. I well, the ones just yesterday when they were getting on me about Dave Murphy. And know what I'm talking about with Dave Murphy. Nathan's trying to say he's the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, it doesn't well, matter. Not. He's still a Jesus hater. He's one of them five percenters. The, um, you know, black Hebrew Israelites. They think the white man's the devil. Well, when you look into their belief system, that's pretty much what they even say. Exactly. So if they're saying it, it's much like us repeating what the Globers say, that their position is, but they don't know it. And so, but that's your position. If you're going to yeah. believe in the Globe, that's your position, whether you like the argument or not. They got it in any way. I said, he's a Jesus hater. Well, it's about to happen. That's the end times for us, eh? Yeah. 
we live in exciting times, that's for sure. Yeah, as I was saying to my wife, I said, hey, listen, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm looking up. Because <clears throat> the Bible is clear on these things. Jesus said, look up, because your redemption is drawing closer and closer. Amazing how many things the Bible has right that people can't see. I mean, talking about New World Order and can't hey, buy yourself can you without some kind of a mark. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You're back. Okay, just one second. Tell me if you can still hear me. Check, 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 check one, two. Check, 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 check one, two. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, but you're a little muffled, but I can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> Is that better? Very good. Much better, much better. Can you, go, hold on. Neil, can you not tell? I'm trying to source my cow. <laughs> Guys in Discord. Tell me if you can hear you. Yeah, that means shut up, please, Neil. I'm going to have to be blunt. Yeah, guys in Discord, can you hear the guys in G Plus? Yes. Yes, sir. No. And uh, yeah, I think the static is gone. There was this really bad static. Yeah. Well, maybe it they can do it like that's tenth man. I'll figure that out in a minute. Can you in G Plus, either Neil or Tenth, can you try and converse with the guys in G Plus in Discord? Hey Discord. Can you hear me, Neil? Copy. Yeah, tenth man is really well. Can you hear me? I could hear you. I could Kiss hear you. my ass. <laughs> just have a back and well, forth. Really. You can hear us too then, Neil. I, I just want you to have a back and forth with one of them. Ask them how their day was and so on. Just so I can see if you can actually talk to each other clearly. Come on, Discord. Talk to 10th. Hey, 10th. Hey, what did you end up doing you? yesterday, brother? Yesterday I rested my right knee because I screwed it up on the weekend, lifting something heavy. So oh, all day man. I was resting it. What a bummer. It was a bummer. Is yeah. it serious? Uh, it's serious enough that I can't walk real well, so <laughs> it's um, <laughs> Bummer. Sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. It's just a body. Okay, Hello, next guys. problem. How's Neil feeling about Flat Earth today? I think we're sorted. Thank you for asking, though. Uh, next problem. Tenth, have you got a fan on? Uh, yeah, let me turn it off. It's causing chaos. Holding your mic open, causing chaos. Oh, thank Jesus. Thank you. Your ears have become so refined, it's almost like you've got cameras in everyone's room. Yeah, that is pretty much what the idea is. I want to be able to hear that. So, although it's subtle, you just hear, oh, it sounds a bit fuzzed up. How well, it now? How it's, now? It's fine. Hopefully you've pointed it away or something. No, no, I just turned it off. Oh, yeah. But it was holding the mic open, so everything was going badly wrong. <laughs> wow, that's, am that's really amazing. It's, it's on low. It's 10 feet away from me on the ceiling, and it's like holding the mic open. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, so the air particles were pressing on your microphone. Is yes. it just me, or is there okay, a really we, we don't need to. We don't need to do this. We don't need to get into the physics of sound, especially as I've not done any pre-show. <laughs> and it's two minutes before we start. But there we go. That's we can't talk about. We can't talk about pressure. Because being a ball. So Adam, I watched that video. Your mic's all messed up, Eli. Just getting a load of crackly distortion. Thinking that, or I'm hoping that was the win. Is it okay now? Yeah, that's better. Oh. So yeah, Adam. Yeah, I watched that video that you sent um, about the guy with the lecture on rainbows. No, you beat me to it. I'm busy, busy gardening this week, mate. Is it? Yeah. So remember when I said my speculation? Speculation is that the sun is a coherent light source that is um, pointed through whatever medium the container is. And it comes out the other side as conical refraction. Comes yeah. out another side, you say? Well, the sun is over there. We're on this side and we're experiencing the refraction on this side. Because wow, wait, coming... way to take my 
comedical statement to the housekeeping question that answered completely out of context. When I say it's over there, I don't mean on the other side of a barrier. <laughs> I mean, it, you just see it over there. It doesn't have an actual position. There is nothing in any actual you're, position. You're, you're taking away from my speculation, Arwen. All right. Get your own. Anyway. I have so remember. Own. So remember when I said... So remember when I said... Um, when I brought up conical refraction, right? Well, in that video, um, his explanation is no different than mine, except his explanation and the globe Earth's explanation includes parallel rays from the sun, right? What's a ray? <laughs> well, like I said, a coherent source of light that traverses through the air through a medium and comes out the other side conically. And so in the heliocentric conception, a rainbow is, I don't know, millions of micro conical refraction phenomena happening at the same time, hitting at the perfect angle for you to see one big rainbow. Did you guys listen to Ball Busters this weekend? No. no I mean, I wanted to know what uh, Adam thought about that. Well, I haven't seen it, but if you're saying that's similar, that's that that's quite interesting. You've you've got a um an inbuilt uh, something a, a container that could function to serve to generate this conical effect. Um, I'd be interested to see what it was, it was Walter Lewin's. Uh, lecture wasn't it so i'll be interested to see how he's postulating the fact with no no medium to generate it well that's sort of the, the medium is the water droplets and and the, the the reason that you get this 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 ring it it's an illusion it's due to the fact that all of the the rays individually are hitting at the same angle because it's coming in parallel which is the assumption I mean, that was pretty huge when I heard it. I was like, whoa. But how would it be able to be parallel throughout an actual distance? I mean, if you're saying that the holographic light manifestation is parallel in relation to the observer, I'd say, yeah, sure. Because none of it is actual. It's only apparent, right? Then it makes sense to me. As soon as you claim some kind of Euclidean origin point for the light, that's where I immediately say no. Nope. Hold, hold on, I, all that's I can beautiful. hear. Hold on, all I can hear is Eli crackling because he's opened his mic mid-sentence, and all I can hear is crackling over the top of you, Arwin. Yeah, story of my life. He's not saying that, Arwin. He's not linking it to anything to do with your statement there. Um, it's just uh, the proposition of an order of things so that the he's just saying within the way he's looking at it the sun would be sat on the other side mic. not any particular place just the other side of the firmament which he's postulating could be generating this conical effect am i right Eli? yes and and that's just that's just my speculative side just to give a cheeky grin but it's not really to focus on that the more important point is the heliocentric explanation must have parallel sun rays which don't exist that's the only point they i've found a positive claim for this phenomena and we can already debunk it that, that's the main point i totally agree with that there's no euclidean origin based parallel light out there coming from huge bodies in fast distances that's not happening that can't be happening Light refracts, distorts in too many ways for light to still be parallel at such insane distances. That's just no. Like, even if it was real, it still wouldn't be like that. Not that it is real, because heliocentrism is fake.
Agreed. I'll, I'll there's, a, there's a bunch of other tidbits in there as well that that I didn't mention because I got to watch it two and three times. Um, but the but the angles and all of the detail that he goes through about the angles. And the more he spoke, the more I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is juicy." Oh yeah. Um, another assumption that's in there is um, the one-way speed of light. Because yeah, because 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 um, there has to be um, this. He he mentioned a speed that the uh, he included the speed that the light is going through the air versus the speed that it's going when it's going through the water. So that was another assumption that he threw in there. I've always wondered how you get parallel rays coming off a ball. Well, it's a, from a black body, remember? So, is it really even a ball? It's on the <laughs> world it is, though, isn't it? But that means that each point is pointing in a slightly different direction and a slightly different distance away from you. Because it's a ball, the, the light source is. So, by right. its own definition, it can't produce parallel rays. Well, could it? It's difficult. But think about yeah, each photon. If it's a literal ball, think about then... each photon leaving the surface. What was that? You think about each photon. All of the surface of the sun is covered in photons. Each one has its own direct angle, R, to the centre that it will leave from, that it will emit from on that path. So not one of them has the same path. Not one of them has the same path and angle, even more, more importantly. So they're always diverging from the moment of leaving. The surface right. they're generated from is a, is a ball. So you can only send them in different directions, different angles. But isn't the whole idea, even with the, the much further supposedly away stars, which are also supposed to be suns, that you end up, because of the vast distances, that only the photons going exactly in the parallel same directions are the ones that are left and the rest all get scattered and doesn't reach us right so could that be some kind of an influence from the sun which is not of course that far away supposedly it's much closer but it's it's all so convoluted but that's not why we what we observe and it's not convoluted because we observe divergent rays so that argument dies right there we don't observe a Euclidean based sun source. So, have you seen the pictures from the ground, the sky, everywhere? The rays are diverging, like Adam says. The moment it leaves the light source, it's already on a different angle. They're not parallel. Well, That's let me correct. Ask a, let me That's ask a, Let me ask a question again. That's what it appears to be. Can I? Yeah. It's not. Well, that's right. And the hand in front of me is really not my hand. It's refracted. Is that right, Arwen? No, no. Your hand is actually physically in front of you and has a Euclidean position within the realm. That's the difference. Oh. All right. Not according to Craig of Fight the Flat Earth. <laughs> can you... Even if it was simulated, you... it still is simulated to be in a Euclidean position in contrast uh, to the sun manifestation, which is purely holographic and unique to the observer. The presupposition that the stars are vast distances is an assumption. It's kind of critical cornerstone to the entire model, though. For the ballers, yeah. Well, it, what what if um what what if the source of light is moving through uh water and uh, a solid medium, that, uh, you wouldn't be able to pinpoint its position if it did have a position. But that's What's true anyway. You don't medium? hold on. You, you don't have to necessarily say what if it was traversing solid and liquid for it to be the case. That is the case. There you go. How well, would you, we know how, how would you give that a position? 
Is he, Eli? Eli, at 90 degrees above you, the GP is directly overhead. That's your zenith with zero refraction. <clears throat> but but the, the whole trick is with the holographic nature of the lights is the lights uniquely manifesting in an apparent position in relation to the observer, still to that observer goes from their sight through the materials within their field of view, right? That does happen. It's just not literally doing that in relation to everybody that's the only difference when it's directly overhead there is no refraction as you move away from it it's very slight where it barely makes a difference in nautical navigation terms once you're at 15 degrees to zero that's when they say don't use those because you're too close to the horizon there's bunch of particulates in the air so just go 15 degrees above the horizon you choose those stars that are above that degree line. And we have a refraction table, and it's a minute of arc is basically one nautical mile of refraction that I've read. So if you're going to an island and you're off a mile or two, you're still going to see it as long as the weather is good. But when it's directly overhead, there is zero refraction. Is that terrestrial refraction? <laughs> no, just kidding. No. No, of course. It's it regular. Doesn't. If terrestrial refraction would exist, then all light bodies of the globe of the heavens, as they approach the apparent horizon, I know that's double, they would all start to, instead of just continue on in a spherical fashion, hitting that horizon and disappearing, they would all slow down and almost like drape onto the horizon because it's all bent upwards into the apparent flat plane while it should circle on so if it's going to compact at the horizon due to terrestrial refraction then celestial no. lights will also compact within it no it's not going to compact yes. to the horizon because of terrestrial refraction terrestrial refraction only exists in their maths so absolutely not it's not going to be doing that but tenth plans just explains that they don't suddenly start figuring out what's occurring within that refractive area where you're looking through a lot of particulate matter as described by 10th man they just say get above it just don't triangulate with a star that's that that is that close to the horizon that's how they get to get around it they don't suddenly start figuring out how the refraction's working excuse me no i know you're like no i want there i look nathan you do this all the time you start out no yeah yeah i was right it was a what if question with terrestrial refraction and if there was terrestrial refraction, which there isn't, then that is what it would look like. There isn't, yeah, when, though, so it doesn't look like that. No, there is none. They make no mention of it. They do make specific mention of refraction, which is why they say when you're looking through that much air, uh, don't, go, don't go and take stuff below 20 degrees because you're looking through too much air. There'll be too much refraction, and the, the position of the star will not be accurate. Stay above 20, and the amount of refraction you you will uh, think will not really affect your results. But as Tan says, zero point, look straight up, you, you, you're getting none because you're just going to... Right. Right. But what do you mean right? Hold on. Right? What do you separate. mean right? That's another thing. Uh, 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 hello. You just told... I just said pretty much verbatim what Adam said, and you told me off at the end of it. I was talking hypoth hypothetically. Yes, you did, Nathan. I concur. I, I said exactly the same as Adam did, didn't I? Yeah, but you didn't start out with no, Arwin. Oh, which right. There was, wasn't even an answer to what I said. I, I put down a hypothetical and what if situation. Yeah, yeah. about terrestrial... Yeah, you can say no to that. To, to terrestrial refraction, yes, I can. Watch, terrestrial refraction. No, definitely not occurring, definitely not what we're viewing. That's what I said that no to. That was not what I was claiming. It was a what if statement. If it was there, this is what it would look like. It's uh, not there, that, uh, that's why it doesn't look like that. Third show in a row no. that you've used this 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 tact where you say, if it was real, then it would be occurring like that. <laughs> third time you've used it. The first time you did it, I was like, really? You're really going to try and employ that? Come on. No, I didn't he expand did that on that. To me. Dude, I've said this literal statement two years ago on this show, and you agree with me. Yeah, I even put down some visuals for it. Uh, terrestrial refraction show. was the only bit I said no to, Arwen. That's the only bit I took a, a version with, if that's the right word. Nathan, can I read... Listen uh, to the entire statement. You just got held up on the word. 
Nathan, the last slides of Master B will address this issue. Tell me when you got it. The very last slide. The last two, yeah. David Birch Navigation blog. Yeah. Okay, so here's a, a blog I found. I've actually called this school uh, up north. Here's an article written in 2012 that somehow did not get posted. It is now because it is now because we just got a question about this that I thought we had answered but could not find it. Then found this draft, which a bit late now we post thanks to National Fairfield in finding the issue mentioned below the emergency navigational book taking the time to tell us. Next slide. Uh, refraction of light as it enters the atmosphere is still one of the largest uncertainties in celestial navigation. When straight starlight leaves the vacuum of outer space and enters the atmosphere, it vents down a small amount depending on how high the star is in the sky. This happens because the light is slowed down in the gas of the atmosphere. See refraction in the sea. Thus, with our sextants, we always measure a star height that is slightly too high. A starlight from stars from 30 degrees above the horizon will bend only some one to two arc minutes. If uncorrected, yielding an error of some one to two nautical miles. But at lower angles, the correction can be twice that or more. At higher angles, it's less, being only half a mile or so at 60 degree and zero by definition for stars overhead. Perfect. Did you need the next slide or is that it? That's it. That, but that's celestial refraction, right? That's what they call that? Right? Yes, and it mentioned atmosphere as well if you want to nitpick. I, I didn't necessarily want to do that. I just wanted to be concrete as to the type of refraction, how it is categorized. Yeah, celestial refraction. Right, and, and there is this actual deviation, right? So let, celestial refraction is technically not fictional, right? Any presumed cause as to how it manifests is another matter, but there is this deviation. Unlike terrestrial refraction, which is completely made up to justify why it doesn't look like a sphere. Yes and no. Right, putting some prefix before, before the description may or may not in certain instances infer things. So I don't know i'll be honest straight off the bat in terms of celestial refraction whether or not that makes any assumptions but what i will say is adam clarified this earlier and was quite his intonation was perfect refraction does light refract it's not rhetorical does light refract yes yes, yes. yes. and what's that called refraction Right, so no prefix necessary. Light deviating from straight has to be dealt with. It's dealt with as thus. Now, if you call it something specific, like terrestrial refraction, suddenly you're taking it outside the realm of light that you experience deviating from straight, which is definitely something that occurs. You can describe it in various different ways. As long as you don't work outside of the conventions of the description, say Snell's Law, then fine. We all experience light doing this phenomena, deviating from its straight path. Fine, light refracts. Does that make it terrestrial refraction or if there's any connotations attached celestial refraction? No, but we know that the effect that's being described is accurate in terms of what occurs, light deviates from straight, we experience it, so what? Right, so it is still just refraction, but it's just a, is it a classonomical, uh, what do you call it? They're, they're classifying just... it away from re terrestrial refraction for whatever reason, and it's not me that's defined it, so I haven't researched it either, so I don't want to comment. But by the same token, light deviating from straight is refraction, and in this case, if they're distinguishing celestial refraction from terrestrial refraction, then fine. We all know what re refraction is, and we all know what terrestrial refraction is, and we know what the description is described in this instance when it comes to looking at stuff that's celestial and how light that you're looking at can deviate from straight. Hope that's clear. Yeah. Nathan, I posted one slide. I'm posting a second one. I'd like to comment on these. Table 19.2. Go ahead. 
Okay. Yeah. Let me go ahead and put the. Did you see the other one now? It's got another table on it, but yes. Okay. So let's go to the first one, table 19.2. The amount of atmospheric refraction bending in minutes viewed at sea level under standard atmospheric conditions, 60 minutes equals one degree. So you can see at 90 degrees, there's no refraction in minutes whatsoever. But as you get down to that 20 degree above the horizon or five degree above the horizon or at horizon, your zero line, look at all the stuff that they, the sailors don't wanna deal with in their calculations. So very little refraction above that 15, 20 degree line. Next slide. Uh, again, altitude error in arc minutes, distance error in nautical miles, and then lowest distance error in nautical miles. A bit, uh, a lot to read here, but basically saying the same thing. Oh. That sounds a lot, but you are trying to be accurate. I was just looking at those numbers, Tom. So if you take the 40 degree mark, uh, 1.2 minutes, it's only 0 0.02 of a degree out. Um, but like I say, once you're getting at that five degree, what's that going to be? That's one divided by 60 times 10, isn't it? Um, you're looking at 0 0.1 of a degree, which is fairly significant for navigating, isn't it? Uh, if you apply that over a course change. Um, so that that's that's why, that even with that standard error, you're gonna be out a little bit, aren't you, with the refraction, um, but you're gonna be massively out below. I mean, it's, it's demonstrating, you know, it's a fourth, it doubles, doesn't it? More than doubles from 40 to 20 and then 20 to five, look. It's a fourfold increase there and then a fourfold again, nearly. So, the, the variance is massive and shows what effect looking through that much atmosphere, that much thick air has, how much refraction. Right. What, it yeah, that's do, what... what it doesn't do is say, oh, it bends at a rate of R, right? So you could reposition it. It says the atmosphere is so thick, the refraction just misplaces it. It doesn't make a claim, as far as I'm aware, of placing it in any particular spot relative to the thickness of the atmosphere. It just creates refra a refractive effect, which means you're not seeing it where it actually is. Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of indicating how much to avoid it by, as opposed to saying this is going to be utilizable to make some claims about things that are occurring within this refraction limit. It's just saying this is how much you'll be off if you use it below this point. Yeah, not off down or left or right in any specific way just you, you're going to be out by that much at least i mean is it well that's why the guy said in the previous article from the david birch navigation article uh but at lower angles the correction can be twice that or more so why would you want to go through all that when all you got to do is aim 50 20 degrees above the horizon to get your uh bearing and distance Exactly, just use a different star, just point higher. It's not that difficult, right? Yeah. Right. But again, I'll say it one more time. It's not like these charts are being used to make assertions about slightly looming non-standard refraction hyenas in the distance. This is just saying, go higher and you'll be more accurate. Point higher, point at a star that's higher, further away from the horizon. Really good. Thank you, Tenth. My pleasure. Anybody out there? I was just going to say, you know. Who's the good fisherman that, that pulls the chat skanks out? Come on, drop your line. It's Monday. Don't mention what day it is. 
Okay, it's no day. What was interesting with the back and forth with virus that I enjoyed was he switched camps. Didn't realize he switched camps, but because he's an anti flat earther, he couldn't even listen to his own words. Yeah, he kept he kept um, claiming Earth is flat. That's what I heard. <laughs> yep. Some people don't catch that, you know. So I've watched other shows where that's happened, and it almost throws the flat earther when the person starts describing how something is flat. You know, right down to really blatant examples. I'll give you one. Rumpus said something to the effect of, well, everything around you is incredibly flat. Now, that will have obviously been taken out of context because he'll have been detailing how, as a result of it, it all looks curved. Obviously, he's an anti-flat earther. I can say that now he's lied. Not just a globe believer following the globe electric anymore. Anyway, the point is that once you've got to that stage and started asserting, you know, you've got bendy horizons and bendy zontal this and curved triangles that, you're essentially making disclaimers within your own rhetoric that don't work within your own rhetoric. Like saying, okay, I appreciate it. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, it's all, all an area of equal altitude. So all flat then. But like I say, some people don't even pick up on it. Oh, I picked up on it. I think he said it about four times. But he went on to say, but therefore the area in the middle of each circle could be popping up in the middle and curving away from the centre of each GP. You're like, no, it couldn't. It wouldn't work. You need a straight line on the bottom of that triangle. But, you know, prior to that, he's explained that he understands that to do the triangulation, you've got an area of equal altitude. That's all flat. So he's made the disclaimers, but as somebody correctly pointed out earlier, they don't want to hear their own words when it's disclaiming how their argument fails. And when you repeat it back to them, it makes it all the more painful for them. <laughs> well, when he when he invokes 90 degrees, uh, he's invoking a right angle. He can't just have one straight line and call that 90 degrees. Yeah, do you remember the dude who told us about how he was seeing things from an orthographic perspective, which you cannot do? And over the yeah. course of the discussion, there was like maybe 40 or 50 repetitions between me and I think it was Chocolate at the time. But also three renditions of the point we were making from him himself. Yes, I remember that guy. How can you forget him? I really thought the penny was going to drop. But what I get a lot is with the Coriolis, when you explain to them how the continent would be coming towards you, they say how ridiculous that sounds. Yeah, doesn't it? Akuma virus will always just concede anything and then just proceed to make an argument that doesn't actually fit it, right? Fit those statements. Like he's just putting puzzle pieces together that don't fit. But he doesn't seem to care or take notice of that. No, that's how he's, he's attacking Nathan's to... argument. Don't you know that? He reached the aha moment at the beginning. I can't remember. I'll have to listen again to catch it. But, ah, oh, he, he, he did one of these, ah, oh, that's how. But then he went right back to being an anti-flat earther. <laughs> yeah, because it's shocking to them at first. And then they go right back. I said this the other day. Anti-flat earther in time will fade or give way to the notion of just somebody who's on the fence. The, co the person who holds so much cognitive dissonance because they want to retain a sphere belief when the paradigm has already shifted beneath them. I thought that maybe that was it. When I heard him somewhat pause, I was like, is this his John Sheldon moment? That's what I said. Is the penny going to drop? Uh, maybe next year. The penny, the penny did drop. That's why he had that moment. <laughs> That's the, but he can't accept it. No, See, that's the thing. Dropped. Could the could the acceptance drop? No, no. no that's what I've just said. Drop. No, no, no. He gummed up the works. There's chewing gum in the slot. Yeah, exactly. The chewing gum, Arwin, is the cognitive dissonance. So while you're saying, oh, yeah, that's the penny drop moment. Well, actually, no, that isn't the penny drop moment. Quite the contrary. That's the moment where the cognitive dissonance, that's where we say share your pain. 
Now, obviously, for the benefit of the audience, we say welcome to Flat Earth because anybody with a reasonable amount of cognition is going to be able to process that mentally and see the logical inference. If it's all flat, it's all flat. If you're triangula triangulating it flat and measuring it flat, then it's flat. You know, it's, it's not that hard to comprehend. But if you've got a fundamental premise in your mind that you cannot let go of, then you're going to say, I understand, I'm not disagreeing, you need the flat line to triangulate. But what about if it was all still spherical? <laughs> yeah. Like that guy. Earth is not flat. That's just chanting. Like That's just flat out chanting when they do that. They get to the end of it and they concede every point you make, but then they say, but the Earth is not flat. And then you would point out the same argument and then they chant it again. The Earth is not flat. Right. So you could see them like a slot machine or whatever, a Kumu virus. Uh, instead of gumming up the works, it just the the coin is rejected. So you hear it going down, kling, 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 but then it just falls into the bucket below. It's like, oh, I thought it dropped, but no. No, he walks it's... away without collecting the money. No, you just get it back. Just, just walk reject. away. All the money fell into the bucket, and he just walked away and left it there. Well, I guess for some, that's their slot in life. Yeah, that slot machine is out of order. It keeps rejecting the coins. I don't think he can make heads or tails of it. <laughs> Speaking of heads or tails, I got Sonny Black's coin. Have you guys ever thought about like the images that they show of the bottom of the ocean? What about them? They're always over a plane. Or, you know, Plane like I've never I've never seen them try to depict anything in the ocean as, as curves like somewhat curved so you know I was uh, reading the Bible and then I Sodom and Gomorrah was referenced as like being uh, on a plane along with some other cities and I was like well what would the distance between you know the one end to the other end be and then, so I looked up, you know, planes of the earth and I'm like, okay, well, they make up one third of the surface. But then I saw abyssal planes, you know, underwater and they make up 50 to 60% of that. And then I started to wonder, well, in these depictions, they have certain like terms. So they got continental rift or continental ridge, right? And then, and then they have, um, mid-ocean ridge, ridge uh, rift, which I guess is a range of mountains underwater. And it says that it spans for 40,000 miles. So I said to myself, well, on top of that 40,000 miles, what's the distance between uh, the, 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 the mid-ocean and the continental bit? Because I'm looking at this image, and there's no curvature between point A and point B. They, they don't even try to make it make sense. Oceans don't make sense on a sphere. That's, uh, mer that's marine refraction for you. <laughs> How would it work? I mean, how would a submarine go? Wouldn't he like be like going along nice and all of a sudden hits the curve of the earth and I mean, how's that even work? No, they work with buoyancy and all like pressure relations. And since that's pretty evened out at a, a certain heights. No, but I'm saying really it would still have, have to... to be a ball, right? Even underwater. What? It would still have to be a ball even on the water, it's, right? It's saying there would be an attitude change. So just like, like say, if you had a ball and a ruler, 
the the ruler is going to deviate from the surface of the ball well that that's what if the if the sub is traveling along and the surface is curving away from it because it's in water floating along you know well it it's not that, like though. it's not like airplanes like they change direction like that they use the turbulence to actually change angular direction they just go forward they stand still they, they can turn and they let themselves go float or sink right and that's how they can move laterally but it's not like airplanes like they literally change the angle of their wing and suddenly the the aerodynamics change is making them go down that doesn't really happen with subs as far as i know works mechanically different but whatever well i never swam in a sphere pool i swam in a swimming pool which is flat and then it, it it slants down to deeper water that makes sense to me yeah but people don't really like spherical pools because then you don't well, have why doesn't space the surface down. also slant down with it this fucking well, gravity shit why is that not happening that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, Chocolate. Because if their gravity was real and it was keeping the oceans down, you and I could not move. It'd have to be so strong we can move our finger or walk. Nah, but butterflies, bro, they got that. Well, butterflies are different, man. Butterflies. They can avoid this magical gravity. Yeah, bro. Fucking... Butterflies just laugh Ooh, at the ocean man. like, ha, 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 look at you. I have to conform to the outside of this ball. I'm over here fluttering my beautiful wings. Fuck yeah, out of here. Yeah, because a, but a butterfly is saying... What a fucking joke. A butterfly is saying, a bending of a conception can't stop me. Mind over matter. <laughs> this is so dumb. Are we still on? Yeah, I've got a minor technical issue that I'm going to try and figure out while we while we're running. So the oh, butterfly okay. saying, the butterfly saying, how can the bending of space time stop me from flying? It can't. Therefore, well, I it, fly. Hang on. At one time, it had him because he was a worm. But he overcame it. <laughs> Maybe that's how it's with gas particles, too. Maybe it's not a story that Nathan tells. Maybe that's how it happened. When they hit the common line, they become butterflies. I figured anti -flat, it out. Anti-flat earthers are worms, and flat earthers are butterflies. Gas particles are worms until they hit the common line. Then they turn into butterflies. And they just stay there. Hey, Neil. You know, it's butterflies, they're one of those things um, that just batter evolution. You know, to, to think that there was a step where one big fat caterpillar says, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to get in a sleeping bag, turn myself into mush <laughs> in the hope that in a few weeks, I'm going to be a butterfly. When, when did that one first succeed? And how many failed mutations? I think with that evolution thing, Adam, I think what the guy is getting at with my son is that he's trying to say that certain viruses affected human beings the same as they affected uh, apes. Yeah, so. Therefore, the similarities and everything are right there. We evolved from apes. A forty-five caliber bullet will affect my right arm the way that affects the right arm of an ape. Yeah. But genetically, I think we're just as close to earthworms, you know? So... Well, Neil, you're going to have to accept. 
Yeah, like there are people in my life that I love that I ex- like my stepdaughter. She came in the house the other day, knowing how I get down. <laughs> knowing how I get down. <laughs> I've showed them things directly because you know it's a lot easier to to pull out like diagrams and websites and all of this when a person's right there. And my daughter yeah, no, my son's on the right side and, of this one. And she she came in with a NASA t shirt. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I love them. I, I couldn't even look at her. I was like, well. Oh. No, but my oh, son is no. on the right side of the argument with evolution here. He's he, he knows that it's a bunch of <clears throat> bollocks. He's actually debating this other guy. So I'm trying to get him some information Eli, to refute it. Eli, I, I love it. So she wore a NASA shirt. Right in your face, Eli. No, I would love that if my family would do that. They're too afraid to even bring up the subject. <laughs> now I buy my son a NASA shirt. What? Yeah. Get him a NASA to, to, as to a clean joke. the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here, here. You want some NASA shirt, well, fanboy? Well, that actually makes sense, Neil, because uh, where he puts it, it's the only space in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, a wholesaler, and he knows I'm a flat earther. But, um, so I just said, send me, when the COVID kicked off, I said to a wholesaler, just send me a load of stock. Um, and he knew what he was sending me. He sent me a load of NASA stuff, of which... I think I sent Nathan two of the NASA bath bombs. Yeah, he does. Um, can you can you hear me, by the way? Can we what? Yeah, we can hear you. You yeah. can hear me, okay. Yeah. Can I say yeah, or will I get yelled at? You'll get yelled at. Shut up, Neil. <laughs> can, can, hold on. Let me just double check. Guys in Discord, can you hear the guys in G+. Yeah, that's all good. Guys in G plus, did you hear that reply? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yes, we did. Perfect. I've solved the audio problem. What was happening was I just happened to notice when Neil I was talking, it was triggering my line. So I assume you guys were getting a bit of feedback in G plus, right? All through the show. Yeah. No, not really. Not all through the show. I got a little feedback uh, for us. I can't say how long, but not long. Okay, I've solved it now. Nathan is such an awesome audio man, solving problems no one I want to hear. Noticed. <laughs> I, I no, you hear. missed it on the pre-show today. Hang he on. told Kent to shut off his fan. How the I'm... hell did he know a fan was on? He knows <laughs> everything. Hear anything. I want to hear Adam's story. Finish it, Adam. I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, by the way. That was it. All I'd say is when when if people come in with like non Nottingham Forest football tops or NASA tops. I'll often just give them a cheeky boo. When they boo, look at that t-shirt. So that's what I'd suggest to you guys. Just... Is it a top seller? Now I've got loads of these NASA bath bombs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's crazy how no one sees like what's going on. Like, nope, let, let's keep it real. No one gave a darn about NASA seven years ago, five, five years. Let's just say seven years ago to be safe. As a matter of fact, I don't remember like the, the conversation around NASA was NASA isn't even a thing anymore because they, they don't get enough funding. That's what I thought was the reality. It was like, okay, I guess NASA is not a thing. Who's going to do the space stuff then? This is around the time I started finding Neil deGrasse Tyson videos. Wait, not enough now, all funding. All of a sudden, there's these NASA shirts everywhere. That's what's being palmed off to private enterprise now. No, I think you're just noticing it differently now because it's the same thing. Like when you get, I never seen a Pathfinder till I got a Pathfinder. Now I see them everywhere. No, no, so no, you're no. not paying attention no, to Neil, this, and now 1, you get it to flat Earth. One thousand percent. I have never seen a NASA shirt from the year two thousand. You until just didn't recently. realize it. I'm telling you. Has anyone else? Yeah, I have. Oh, get Primark people. There's, there was loads of they like you see them 
in TK Maxx and places like that, you know, when they're pimping cheap goods. Um, oh, yeah, that's the incorrect. But it's crap stock, mate. Like I say, this the, this stock that I got was like cheap crap. What stock's available? Because COVID, there's nothing about. So I just said, so he's reading around the back of his warehouse. So this isn't stock people want. But it's obviously stock that's liveried up with NASA and is out there. Um, Can I just try something else? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. This is a slight pause. Can somebody from Discord talk? And I'm just going to toggle a switch and see if it helps. Guys in G+, just listen and tell me if you lose them. Go ahead, somebody just say something from Discord, that's all I need. Right, I guess I'll volunteer. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I only recall seeing a NASA shirt just like, maybe a couple of months ago. Okay, at a gym. he did seem that to get cut time. off. Who's saying that, Arwen? Did you, did you say you lost him halfway through that, Arwen, or something? Yeah, he said like, is he got? and then he just got cut off, no more sound after that. Okay, one more time. Uh... Righteous. Right. I like to play the video game Mass Effect. And that is sci fi. And maybe that's what's interesting people to get back into sci fi. Because. Okay, thank you. It's more out in the. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Did he come and go? Was he no, cutting no, off? Perfect. No. No interruptions, no cutoffs. Oh, really? His, his words were clipping a bit, though. No, no, all I want to know is, does he yeah. completely disappear at any point? One more time, uh, Righteous. All right. Well, I'm chewing my food now, so... If we want to hear about Mass Effect. <laughs> well, you guys are interrupting me in my middle of my meal. What do you want to say? But yeah, I'll just say a few Hello? more words. Yeah, no Righteous yet. Like you can't hear him. And no. Okay, nope. that's all I needed to know. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Righteous. Right. One more word out of you, Righteous. Go on. No, finish what you were saying about Mass Effect. <laughs> it was just filling a thing. It was kind of <laughs> on topic, but it's like space sci-fi, right? A lot of nerds get into this now, right? They like they like video games. I shouldn't say nerds. You know what I'm trying to say. Like people that get passionate about something, right? Like I generally... When people get into something, like let's say they learn about space through a media, like let's say a movie or a video game, then they're more likely to look into it, like to see what the so-called experts say about it, right? Right, uh, sci-fi fans, formerly known as nerds. Are you Xbox or PlayStation, Righteous? I'm PC Master Race now. <laughs> uh, I don't know if any, ah. many of you get that joke. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. All right. So, just out of interest, everyone in everywhere, is everything clear? Can you all hear each other clearly? Yeah, you came through loud and uh, clear, smooth. No yeah, that's, that's really good. That's like talking in the same room with him, right? You can actually... We've got no excuse for talking over Discord now. I, th I think, yeah, I've, I've just spent all weekend doing this, like, non-stop morning noon and night and i'm just fine tweaking it now because i want it to be better so you've got to really dig into it to find well what's that little tiny distortion and you're like how can you even tell he's got a fan well i'm digging into every little tiny distortion i can find and figuring out what's causing it and if i can get rid of them all it'll sound better well now i don't think there's any repeat audio that's cycling back into your sound in g plus which means that won't eventually cause some mild distortion at the end of the chain and you'll hear them in discord better hopefully hmm. are you recording your activity on the audio banana too what you're doing so it's visible no 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 that's what i did all over the weekend i just spent my time capturing my screen as i was making the adjustments so if i made a mistake or something went drastically wrong i could go back and see what it did after i published it but um, although there are ways of getting your audio out of OBS so you can hear what all the filters do, you've obviously got all the, the delay then, so it's really difficult to listen to your own voice. So I was just recording stuff, uploading it, listening it back after it's been processed by YouTube, and then making the adjustments based on everything being 
completely rendered and this is as much as I'm going to tell you because if I'd have pu published anything that I did it would have been so tedious sitting there listening to me I used to do it with other people so there was a time when Patricia and um, Zoe both helped me do it and obviously you've got to be like now everything's actually functioning this is being recorded hence I'm going to try and keep this brief um, but you've got to be in that scenario to actually figure out how to get things to work fun function correctly so you know it's one of them I've just I've committed to doing it today didn't get a pre-show the live show I forgot to press the record button so this particular video hasn't got the live bit in it like it normally has so it's like okay so there's been a few cock-ups that's going to happen just in for a penny in for a pound I might as well sort out the audio issues Not that they're massive. Hey, if you can get the sound better on the long run, why not, you know? And whatever you did in the last phase of the sound testing uh, back and forth with Discord, everything did seem much, much clearer. So whatever you did, it seemed to work. Good. Very, 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 very complicated. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Got a whole sound panel with the, like 36 different gauges and all that. Everything. Just running the show is very, very, very complicated. In other words, if you'd not done it before, you couldn't just stroll in and start running a show like this. I'm not just tooting my own horn. It, tooting my own horn. It is just complicated to do. It's just that's how it is. A sound guy is a pretty well-paying serious profession out there, right? So, good on you. No, you mentioned that in one of the chats the other day, and I'm like, no, not at all. Not unless you, it's like being a famous person, being a, a, a sound, well-paid sound person. Most people are just on a salary. I mean, I've been recently watching videos from a boom mic operator, you know, and he's still just haggling his salary at an hourly rate. Uh, yes, I get that. It's not like, oh, anybody can do it everywhere. But I mean, like, if you have some media operation, you really want a good audio guy, right? Especially if it's a live thing, like, you really, really need it. And even, like, in a live theatric stage performance, you really need a good audio guy. Because if the audio is going to mess up, everything's going to mess up. It's going to ruin it. So... You are that guy. And it takes you run more a channel. Work than you think. Hmm? You are that guy. Yes, but my sound quality is not the best side. I'm very happy with how it works so far. And but hey, I did get a lot of advice and help, like tweaking through Skype and all that. So yeah, audio guys, it makes it makes a media operation work. Well, I can hear myself in the background, so you've got your speakers too loud. Okay, that could be. Can I, can I derail this conversation at some point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We hear you. Yeah, he said yes. Go yeah. on. Sorry. Um. Yeah, Nathan. I just was uh, on online uh, having an argument with someone about um, the the sun on the bottom of clouds. And I remember you were ha you had this discussion with Ed before, and I think you showed a video that demonstrates how it could work on a flat plane. And I'm looking for the video, and I, I was wondering if you know what the link is, or if you could explain it, how it would work. Irrelevant. I know yeah, it's I know it's like uh, Dave, it doesn't Dave prove it's flatter somewhere. Dave Weiss has a video joking. somewhere. Don't know exactly where. Uh, where he, where he, sh uh, like, has um this light, like, on a, on a, like, say, a clothing line, okay. um, and he kind of brings the light source like across that clothing line, and then he demonstrates that he can take a light and move it across that line, and even though the light is above the table, once it reaches a certain angle, you get the uh, light reflecting, and you can view the light uh, reflecting and sh the, the light appears to be on the top of um, 
because there's a table and there's the surface above the table and the, the underside of it is lit even though the light source is above it so um dave weiss has that video somewhere so you might want to dig you know, he's talking that. about the chris berry video so chris berry does it underneath a car in a garage with a very lo uh, long what do you call it stand light like a stage light that's what he's talking about it's chris berry b-a-r-r-y b-e-r-r-y yeah chris berry okay sweet thanks chris berry is awesome he made chris berry my is awesome. bird intro music chris berry is awesome <laughs> subscribe today practical dude dude he says he's a man of all traits he can do a lot of different things and he's pretty good at it Great. oh i also wanted to ask 10th something and a family man Ten? more Arwin. go ahead whoever it was in discord well, I wanted to ask Tenth if there's a, a where, uh, somewhere to watch his because I look for Tenth Man is Tenth Man Rising his channel because I wanted to watch his sex tent um, dem, uh, slides that he set up but I, I didn't see it on his channel. There, I've been putting it on Nathan's in bits and pieces. I haven't had the time to do a full thing to put on it, so you'll only one. find it on Nathan's. No, no, there is one on my channel. It's called Sextant Proves Earth Is Flat. It's got a picture yeah, of a dude okay. holding a sextant. And that's just Tenth Man's presentation along with the discussion. It was epic, actually, because the guy came in and said, like we discussed on the pre-show that probably didn't get recorded, um, about people coming in and going, well, a sextant can only work on a globe Earth. Uh, no, it can't. Is that on the 1980 or just the Nathan Oakley? 1980. Yeah, I haven't posted anything on 10th Man Rising uh, and won't until my schedule frees up. So go to Nathan's. Like I said, that was an epic video because somebody came in, asserted that there could only be a sextant use on a globe, and then he had the demonstration and the discussion with 10th Man. So that's that particular bit. It was well worth cutting out. As much as I'm not, I'm not putting down any you know, a presentation that you'd actually do 10th, I'm sure that would be epic also. But you know what I mean? When it's somebody actually saying, Globe Earth has to have a sextant, or whatever he said, I can't remember. Yeah, it was uh, towards the end of the live show, and I came into the after show and said, did he say sextant? And I caught it, and that's when it started, because it was just so organic, the way that show went. It was a good show today, with Virus. Virus. That was... Go on. He, he must have been thinking about it since the last time. <laughs> That's the perfect balance. Yeah. Very limited fundy muting. And every so often, because you're having a point explained, you get the concession. Yes, I understand. Straight bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond the horizon. Yeah, yeah. Geographical position. Yeah, yeah. I understand it. And then obviously we get to say, well, great. That's because we've won. Welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> Those sorts of things. Rather than a load of obfuscation, muting and chanting. Towards the end he did that. Enough for it to be contextually perfect for me to just come off at of that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? I find I find that they're afraid of the sextant uh, argument uh, because they haven't researched it. When they research it, they're going to be afraid of their position because it just destroys the ball destroys the globe model once they understand how section actually works yeah even with that even with a bit of cursory research somebody challenged you after that video was put out although it was addressed to me it was you doing the presentation but regardless the end conclusion the guy drew was well they're drawing a straight line out to the horizon and gp of the star and i think the only reason they do it flat is so that they can assume it's flat that was his conclusion you're like yeah Welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> really? Yeah, and then he rounded off his... The, uh, the people show. on his own side do it flat to assume it's flat, even though they assert that it's a ball? He, 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 he <laughs> went into describing presupposing zeniths that move towards the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth and went into detail about it for about two minutes. Yeah. He then ignored that completely and described how triangulation actually works. And then at the end, summarise that, 
I think something's fishy here was the implication because they've got to do it with a flat bottom. <laughs> and I think the only reason they do it that way, that would be triangulation, by the way, triangulation on the land, actually doing it with a flat straight line is because they want to assume it's flat. But I don't really know. I don't really understand it. That was his conclusion. Again, me describing how people sink into the cognitive dissonance of, well, I understand this now. It's flat, like virus did today. It's like yeah, the bombers yeah, like, are trying yeah, to understand, but... Oh. Sorry, well, that was, the way, that was the way that guy ended his show after he said what Nathan said he said. He said, well, I, I did just start looking at it into it last week. <laughs> yeah, exactly like Virus did. Well, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I've only really been looking at this at a week, but I know enough to say that I can basically chant out how it works and operates on a flat plane and then just say it's a sphere afterwards, or better still, say how I understand it works on a flat plane and how the people who are utilising this must be using it as a flat plane just so they can say it's flat. Because obviously it's still a sphere. Yeah, no, you must be wrong about this fear. No, but that's brilliant. <laughs> that, because this means that they conscious like in their subconscious realize like, yeah, the flat earthers are right, but we can't admit it. So it seems almost like they're conjuring forth a flat earth reality, but without the existential conclusions as to that it is in the ball. Precisely, aka cognitive dissonance, share your pain fundy. You know it's flat, we know it's flat, it measures flat, we navigate it flat, it looks flat, it's obviously flat. But what's that you say? Maybe if I ignore all of that and then just assume that the level plane in this triangulation example with level flat lines to do the triangulation, could that actually have curved surfaces? They start asking questions like that. It gets really bad if I go to the next level because I have a compilation of recordings and citations that say, well, when you use the sextant, it works better if you imagine the Earth is still and motionless and the stars are moving. They actually say that. The cognitive dissonance drift, oh, yeah, the drift apart. It's getting well, really, really. If you didn't have a flat plane, how, how was Mr. Andrew Thomas Young going to do his refraction calculations? <laughs> Since he obviously did it over a flat plane and then had to take geometric considerations. How would he do that? Obviously, Andrew Thomas Young knows it's a flat plane. Hmm. But he just measured it as a flat plane, then took the considerations. Right, because oh, you, you know, measure the ball, the you measure it flat. See, it all works out. Oh yeah, <laughs> sounds ridiculous. Yeah, by the one hand, they're saying the Earth is rotating for Coriolis that doesn't exist, Earth-based variety. On the other hand, they're saying when you want to use the sex, and you got to imagine the Earth is still and the stars are turning. These, I, the, I heard the uh, blue marble quote too, called Nathan. You dummy. The Earth isn't rotating underneath the hot air balloon, you dummy. You big dummy. <laughs> hey, you big dummy blue marble. Your, your side says it is. When, when are you setting up that debate with Neil deGrasse? Because you guys got to work that out again. I want to see that one. I would love to. I, I would love for him to call Neil deGrasse a big dummy, because Neil deGrasse said that the Earth spun underneath the football as a kick, allowing this football team to win their game. No, big what dummy. We, no, what we need is them to basically meet up secretly and have an hour conversation leading up to the actual officially recorded interview. And then somebody needs to by accident record it anyway, because when they have finished the hour of talking, they probably conclude that they better not do the interview because they're not getting out of this one. <laughs> or they could go ahead with it and just make a completely fabricated story, bypassing both points and with it the conflict. Well, I'll just summarize both points in the conflict. So Neil deGrasse Tyson has an assertion that there's two reference frames that would be Earth turning beneath a football to cause the deflection he claimed was the result of that winning field goal. Curving through the goal as Earth turned beneath is the result of two reference frames. 
Now, there's a simultaneous assertion from Blue Marble Science that there is only one reference frame. Effectively, the atmosphere moves with the ground beneath. They are essentially the same. In other words, when you leave the turning reference frame that he claims and assumes with no demonstrable effect, it's essentially not deviating from the air that is moving with the ground by assumption. One reference frame. So just to summarise that, one reference frame from Blue Marble Science, two reference frames from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why do we have two narratives coming from the same side? Because we don't see Earth turning beneath anything that isn't asserted to do it with a minor amount of time in the actual air. Therefore, you'll have the assertion that Earth turns beneath bullets and footballs, but when then you point out that it would turn under hot air balloons, aeroplanes, and you if you jumped up and down, suddenly they need to assert that there's only one reference frame and everything moves in lockstep, negating the claim that it would turn underneath bullets and footballs. You big dummy. We never Seems claimed like... the Earth curve is all right. <laughs> Seems like a hell of a contradiction. You know, when you feed back what they actually teach, they laugh and mock and say, you big dummy. Yeah, but this is your belief. This is your claim. You big dummy. But this is what you have. <laughs> you big dummies. <laughs> Gravity is a force. Everybody knows that, George Booster. Well, literally, it's not a force. But what had happened, what he meant was, uh, it is, but, you know, blah, 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 blah. You big dummy. Th th this is how y'all sound, Clover. So what's gravity? Just before we move on to gravity, does anybody watch Blue Marble? I don't. Nope. Can anybody from Discord I tell me if he's figured out yet that I've, this argument has been repositioned to his single reference frame, No Drift to Observe? versus Neil deGrasse Tyson's two reference frames drift to observe. Has he figured that out yet? I has he figured out that he actually can't attack me in any way, shape or form in this regard? I'd like to know if he's figured that out yet. I don't have to do research to answer that one. No. No, he didn't. Uh, th that is my natural assumption. Well then... I guess they got things to work out because they got a hell of a contradiction on their own side. Might want to might want to see what's up with that, guys. I don't know. Any Globers in Discord got drift? No, because you know what's going to happen. They're going to no drift. They're going <laughs> to shake hands and say that they're both right. So they don't know what Nathan's talking about. They need a force, they ain't got a force. They need a drift, they ain't got a drift. They need a physical horizon to block the bottoms of boats and buildings. They don't have a physical horizon to, bottom, to block the bottoms of boats. Everything they say, they don't have. And so they, they hold two positions at one time. There's, there's and more. then they ask us there's why more. we don't see these things that they assert that we're supposed to have that we don't have. <laughs> they ask us, why would you expect to see the geometric horizon? The same nonsense that's been blocking boats and buildings for years and years and years. They even got folk tales about it. Are you serious? Right? Exactly. And why would you expect to see Earth turning beneath a hot air balloon at 15 degrees an hour when that's asserted by Neil deGrasse Tyson to happen under a football? Why would you expect it? Ultimately speaking, the attempt with the geometric horizon, and in this case it was successful until now with drift, was to reposition the argument to make it such that the flat earther is asserting the thing that's been debunked by the flat earther. So suddenly it becomes the flat earther's claim that Earth should have 15 degrees an hour drift underneath hot air balloons. And you big dummy, why would you expect Earth to turn under hot air balloons? Well, that's been repositioned by me into Neil deGrasse Tyson says Earth turns under a football when it leaves the ground, two reference frames. Blue Marble Science says... Earth will not turn under a football when it leaves the ground. One reference frame. That leaves no opening to attack me. Although virus yeah, well, tried um, a few there's times. A, he tried yeah, to make a, it your claim a few times. There's more to the, um, Neil's list. I mean, not Neil's list. Uh, Tenth Man's list. So there's also um, liquid 
um, or matter in the liquid state needs to be contained. Um, matter in the gaseous state also needs to be contained. And they say, well, yeah, well, gravity acts as the natural container for these things. How does it do that? I don't know. What is gravity? We don't know. Next question. Ooh, coming from the man himself. <laughs> Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. What is gravity? We don't know. Next question. It's pretty... Uh, you can connect the dots because they can't see the geometric horizon, but there has to be one. There has to be a force called gravity, but they can't define it or prove it. Show me a citation that says that the geometric horizon is visible. National Geographic. Uh, the local horizon, also known as the geometric horizon, is the visible markation between land and sky. Hmm, visible. They even underlined visible for you guys, Globers. <laughs> so you know how silly it is to come in here and tell us that you, we shouldn't expect to see it. We don't see it when they underlined it for you. Are you guys going to set up a debate with National Geographic too? Yeah, but that's the end of their argument, isn't it? That's where the paradox comes. When you've lied about what Earth is, and the lie involves having a physical geometric horizon, then it's going to be defined by the people who assert you're on a sphere, that would be National Geographic, as what it is. The horizons claim to be Earth curve. That's how it is, right? We all understand that Earth's claim to be Earth curve. Uh, the horizons claim to be Earth curve. Yeah, we all understand that it's claimed to be Earth curve. Until we point out that it isn't, and show how it's physically impossible to be Earth curve, geometrically impossible to be Earth curve, and the disclaimers come our way from the anti-flat earthers that the geometric horizon only exists in the maths. And yet, that's supposed to be your physical horizon in your actual existence. It isn't. The horizon's not an actual physical position that you can travel to and give a postcode to. It's neither a physical blockage to something in the distance either, a limitation to your view, based on the aperture of what you're viewing it and the conditions on the day, is definitely not a physical earth curve edge blocking things in the distance. But that's what everybody believes it is. That's why it's defined that way by National Geographic. Until we debunk it with the black swan. Then roll on the, we wouldn't expect to see the geometric horizon. The geometric horizon only exists in the maths. Nobody claims the horizon is earth curve. That's what we get. Oh, and Neil deGrasse Tyson's exactly. rebuttal to that, we can't get a high up enough to see the curve. Well, what about Al Biruni? How high did Al Biruni go? It's, it's he crazy. didn't know about terrestrial refraction yet, so... It's a complete double-speak nonsense lie by Neil deGrasse Tyson, part of his magic trick, because when he says you can't get high enough to see Earth curve, the horizon's Earth curve. As soon as you see the horizon, it's claimed that you're seeing Earth curve. That's why they measure it and give us Earth curve maths to claim how much it's physically blocked stuff in the distance. Because what's blocking it? Oh, the horizon, they claim, is Earth curve edge. So when he says you can't go high enough to see Earth curve, well, why are we calculating it from the ground? You've reified the horizon into a physical sphere edge. doesn't matter how high you are. If you can see the horizon, you're claimed to be seeing Earth curve edge obstruction. The Earth curve edge is what your horizon is if you've got a globe belief. We've just debunked it. And that's the point, right? Well, how are we calculating something from the ground that can't be seen from that high up? How are you fixing your face to say that shit? Yeah, what can't be seen? Well, the horizon's Earth curve, isn't it, Mr. deGrasse Tyson? You're saying we can't see the horizon when we get high up? Oh, well, uh, we can't see it curving from six to three mil off this beach ball. Uh, sorry, I'm not on that beach ball. What are you talking about? I just want to access the point that uh, now all this noise was. That stuff is flat. That's the one truth so the that he has that, uh, to shine through. Uh, in case any Globers are under any, yeah. um, you know, in case you guys are thinking that we're not understanding what was said, for pretty much any point that the topic was brought up, the horizon, that is, prior to 2020, when the black swan dropped, 
and you can go look at all of the videos, all of the PDFs, everything they have on Horizons. And the horizon is the visible boundary where the sky meets the ground. And that boundary is noted to be 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet away. So that horizon, that visible horizon that you're looking at for a three foot observer is six feet away. That's the common example they give on Google if you look it up. As a matter of fact, you look through these PDFs, they don't mention refraction anywhere. They just tell you based on your height above this circle of Earth where the horizon would be. All of this extra Eli, did stuff you... is ad hoc. Eli, did you mean to say six foot man is three miles away or? Yes. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, it's yeah. incorporated into the black swan. If the Earth is a sphere radius 39.59, then every distance to horizon, as Earth curve in this example will be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. Yeah, that's the Earth curve geometry maths. Correct. They say you'll see Earth curve at 1.2 times the square root of your eye height. That's what they say. Or to put it another way, the horizon is Earth curve. And it doesn't matter at what height you view it, it's claimed to be a physical Earth curve edge. And it has physical limitations based on the geometry that only exists in the maths. In reality, we don't have a geometric physical horizon. The horizon is never a physical geometric sphere edge. It can never be beyond the parameters of that geometric physical limitation if it was. And we have demonstrated beyond all certitude that the horizon is in excess of the geometric limitations of a sphere edge with a radius 39.59 based on 1.2 times the square root of the observation height in feet. That's what they assert. Horizon's earth curve and it isn't. So that being said, and if anyone's got a decent amount of education behind them, then what is causing the bottom of boats and buildings to disappear is perspective and distance and weather, temperature. It's not Earth curve because it doesn't meet the limitations. Or actually, it needs to be physical and can't go past a certain mileage. And when you see the horizon over 10 miles out, when it could only be 1.22, you got to throw that one out and say it's got to be the other. Yep. We've debunked the horizon as Earth curve. And if it's not a physical limitation to your view, it can't derive R. It can't give you all the maths. It implodes all of the claims that Earth's a sphere. Debunks R, debunks all of your distances for the speed of light, gravity, all of the celestial objects and their distances. It is all dead because you need a sphere edge horizon you haven't got one anymore i i just liked the uh, ball busters on saturday that was the final nail for me i know qe's was 1a um but the bit that really did it for me was the andrew thomas young quote on, on two levels the quote and then the rebuttal um the quotes to do with the horizontal ray Paradox. So horizontal rays uh, do not cross any horizontal boundaries between denser and less dense air in a stratified atmosphere. If we're basically denying any effects of so-called terrestrial refraction due to Snell's law, um, I said that, that's point one, which is destroyed enough. But the, I, I love the way QE finds these things. The cheeky way out was to deny rays. Um, which I thought was um, almost disingenuous. Anybody got any comment on that? If not, I'm going to round out. Well, whatever light is, it doesn't bend in circles or curves. It can't do that. It can, at best, change angles because of a medium change. That's it. Perfect. Exactly. Light does refract. Does it refract at a base level based on r no it does not and with that i am going to say a huge massive enormous thank you to both discord and g plus panels for making today's after show possible of course a massive thank you to all of you in either nathan oakley 1980 or nathan oakley programming streams for hopefully smashing the super chat liking commenting sharing subscribing and becoming a nathan oakley 1980 channel member also below this video you can get 50 pounds for swapping your uk electricity supplier to octopus energy 
I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.